This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. In this quick tip video, I wanna show you guys how to create this kind of typewriter typing effect within After Effects using expressions. Um, we will not be focusing on how to create the stylistic, glitchy computer screen, digital, you know, blocky look here. Um, this kind of pixelated look will be covered in another separate tutorial, probably in the future. I will show you guys how to do it really quickly using some um, universe stuff. Um, but in this video, I want to focus on the actual typewriting effect. Um, you may think it's kind of corny, you'll never use it, but actually, I, you know, I thought the same thing. Uh, but you might use it for some, you know, web browser mock-up typing stuff, um, you know, some sci-fi stuff. So, you know, it will be kind of handy. Um, by the time you guys are watching this, there will probably be a preset made for this typing effect so that you can just kind of slap on the preset onto your text layer and it should do all the expressions for you so you don't have to do it. Um, yourself, but I do want to sh walk you guys through the expressions so you have a general idea of how it works and maybe you can apply the the expression and tweak it to your own project and you know learn from it and stuff. But basically, this is going to be available as a preset. Uh, links in the video description down below. Um, so yeah, so we have a single text layer here called Typewriter, um, and basically you get this really nice cursor that you see here. Um, right here and there's some controls like the speed of which things get typed up which can be keyframed you have a use overwrite cursor which changes the kind of um, kind of pipe symbol cursor to uh, overwrite style cursor what you see in terminals so kind of like this where it kind of overwrites text um, you know that could be more appropriate for some more sci-fi stuff or some typewriting stuff or if you're going for a more modern web browser approach, maybe the pipe will do fine. And then you have the ability to change the cursor color um, if you want to here. This little cursor color here. Um, so there's some few options here, but I do want to walk you guys through the uh, expressions for those who are curious. If not, download the preset down below. So we're going to start with, with um, kind of um, basically defining some variables here. So the current timer um, is going to be the current time indicator. So this time right here, wherever the scrub is, it's gonna be the current time minus the layer's endpoint. So basically the current timer is always increasing because time is always increasing and you're subtracting a constant uh, endpoint. So this current timer is gonna be constantly increasing. You have the speed variable, which is linked to the speed slider right here. And of course the enable override cursor is just linked to the checkbox right here. So these are just some flat variables here. So this is where we start getting kind of interesting. So um, T is defined as the current timer, which is always increasing, and time speed, which is basically the multiplier. So the speed slider is just a multiplier, basically, so speeding things up, and that's what T is. And basically, I kind of mashed up these kind of expressions from the internet with some minor tweaks and just kind of matching things around here. Um, so I didn't really come up with this. Um, and then you have F equals to the current timer mod one. So you're taking the remainder, you know, you're, you're dividing the current timer by one basically, and you're getting the remainder using the modulus. You're getting the remainder, and so you're gonna get, be getting a, um, you know, probably a decimal, and then you're rounding that number to, you know, an integer here. And then this is where the clever stuff goes. So we're doing an if else statement here. And so if f is equal to one, and then we're gonna be doing a um, bitwise or operator t comma zero, pretty complex stuff. Um, I don't wanna explain this because I don't really understand it too much myself to explain it as well as I should. Basically we're doing this, and here I have a little quick um, if else statement. Um, so if the enable overwrite checkbox is checked, equal to one, which is true, we're gonna be using the overwrite cursor. If not, we're gonna be using the default pipe cursor or we're gonna be using the space if none of those apply. And then finally, to actually, you know, cut out the text and show the text, you know, bit by bit, we're gonna be using substring expression right here. And so we're gonna start from the zero index, which is the beginning, to, and this T is the length here. So basically at the beginning, you know, T is a very small number because current time is zero, basically. So we're gonna show nothing. And as the timer, current timer increases, we're gonna show more and more length of the substring of the source text. And then of course, at the end of everything, we're appending the cursor 
which is defined as our pipe or our underscore here. So basically we're taking the substring and we're adding the cursor to it. And so we have something like this. And then to kind of single out and control the color of the cursor here, which is always gonna be the last character of our text. And so basically we need to extract the last index of this text string here. And we're doing that using an animator and we're using a range selector here to select a range. And basically we're going from the start to the end. Well, first of all, we're changing the units instead of percentages, which is the default to index here, right? So index, and so now we're gonna be looking for the index range. And we're always selecting the last index to get that, to single out that cursor. So we're doing basically the source text length. So the whole string length minus one. So we're gonna start over here, right before the cursor, and we're gonna end at the cursor right here. So source text minus one to source text length. And basically we're selecting that out. And for that range selector, we have a fill color applied to it, which is linked to our cursor color. So we can change the cursor color and it's gonna change the cursor, the cursor color here. And so that's pretty much how it works. You can, you know, you can do some more fancy expression stuff and add more controls um, using expression controls to the type art effect, you know, expand on it, change the expressions. Um, and that's how you kind of create this look with some nice little options for your sci-fi movies or your browser mockups or whatever. So this is just a really quick, you know, quick tip, download the preset, check it out, use it if you want, if not modify it. Um, and if you're kind of interested in the digital look here, basically I'm just using some paid plugins from the universe suite. But this is a really fantastic suite if you want, if you do a lot of motion graphic stuff or VFX stuff, um, this is a, a suite pretty much full of just like stylistic stuff like glows, distortions and stylistic stuff. Um, a lot of cool stuff here to kind of give your, your project a little more oomph, if you know what I mean. So Hollow Matrix, you know, this is like Aaron Rabinowitz's like little baby here. Um, basically, he just revamped it. Him and Ray Giant's team like just like revamped this whole thing. So it's a lot more versatile um, and it kind of gives you that digital hologram kind of look here. So this is what that's doing. You have a lot of options for glow, scan lines, statics, distortions, glitches, low res stuff. So if you click play, you kind of have like this digital glitch, low res randomly happening and stuff like that. So there's a lot of controls, pretty cool part of the universe suite as well as the chromatic aberration for the kind of distortion screen look, as well as the RGB separation to kind of give it that, you know, up close pixelated look. Um, if you want to learn more on how to create this using um, native After Effects tools like CC Ball Action or whatever, Andrew Kramer has a really nice digital screen um, tutorial look um, on Video Copilot, and so no explanation there. Um, but this is, you know, a quick little typewriter effect, nothing too complicated. Um, I'm not gonna take credit for this, but the preset that I will create from this project will be available online on creativedojo.net. So check it out uh, over at creativedojo.net. Um, so before we go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They are the place to be. They have amazing, beautifully crafted themes designed by professionals. No coding required, so you can customize the site the way you want it to look like without any coding experience required for that. They have amazing customer support, you know, flexible pricing, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is the typewriter preset, really quick tutorial for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Career of Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.